The sound of the train Nathaniel Hawthorne wrote more than a century ago brings a noisy world into our slumberous peace. For millions, that sound has personified progress. With the railroads came people and towns and industry. Out of an expansive wilderness, a continent was carved. East and west were linked to the sound of an anvil chorus. However different we may have been, American or Canadian, black or white, rich or poor, Anglo-Saxon or Oriental. In a sense, we were all parishioners of the railroad. The railroads brought us together as people, as nations, as workers, and they have had a profound influence on our lives. A thundering train is a moving monument man's achievement. Yet the foundations, the tracks of the progress that spawned an industrial revolution were laid by railroad men. Machines are mere byproducts of progress. It is people who make progress. If the railroad symbolized progress, then the men who blaze the trail, maintenance of way employees, are the true pioneers of that progress. Out of their blood and sweat and tears came the greatest industrialized society the world has ever known. Their hands built North America. Their hearts built a union, the Brotherhood of Maintenance of Way employees. Together now for a century, we have come far. There's something about walking along a railroad track that makes your mind start to wander. If only these tracks of ballast and wood, steel and spikes could talk, what a story they would have to tell. They tell us about the people they've given a lift to during their life, important people like presidents and prime ministers, and everyday people like you and me. And I have this hunch that they'd spend a lot of time telling us about the thousands of everyday Joes they've gotten to know through the years. These tracks, unlike some people, don't really care about things like class distinction, the country you come from, or the color of your skin. They tell us about the freight they've carried, everything from coal to cars to chemicals. But most of all, they could tell us about the people to whom they owe their existence, the maintenance of way employees. Behind every star, there's a stagehand, and the same thing is true on the railroads. In all kinds of weather and in every situation, if it weren't for the men on the tracks, trains would not be passing by. There would be no railroads. Some years ago, an advertisement for a rail line was headlined, You Ride Better Because of the Rocks. Shakespeare couldn't have said it better. Unfortunately, that kind of recognition of maintenance of way employees is the exception, not the rule. Conditions were, in those days, uh, pretty rough. Terrible conditions. They lived in little shanties along the rights of way. And uh, they were at the mercy of the company. They had no seniority. They had no protection at all. If you look back and just see how our brothers were treated on the track, they're, they're like slaves. And, that, and that's both in the United States and Canada at the beginning. Now they're not. They're treated like human beings. Since the birth of trains, the men on the tracks have had to fight for their recognition and rights. The history of maintenance of way employees is a history of struggle. A hundred years ago, the seeds of the struggles to come were growing especially in the mind of a young track foreman in Alabama, John Wilson. Back then, the foremen of adjoining sections would each start from a designated point of track and walk until they met up with each other. One day in 1887, as Wilson was making his way along the tracks, something happened that convinced him of the need for an organization for maintenance of way employees.
Murphy, let's put you back into it. Don't fall asleep on the pry bar. We're not gonna take all day. Huh? Move it on down the line. There, there. Yeah, that's it. The way... Hey, Wilson, I need to see you. I got something for you. What's on your mind, Flynn? Here's your pay and your friend Sullivan's. Give it to him at the turnaround. You know, I've been talking to some of the men, Flynn. You ain't gonna keep good gandies if you keep working them to death. Look, Wilson, you just do your job and keep your mouth shut. If these men don't want to work, I know plenty who do. Work? What do you know about work? These aren't figures on a sheet. They're men with families. And if they decide to walk, you ain't got a railroad. Now you think about that. You can't talk to me like that. All right, get back to work, there. When Wilson arrived at the designated turnaround point, there was no sign of the other foreman he was supposed to meet. Sensing something was wrong, he decided to go on to his friend's home. Sarah, who is it? Come away from the door. It's Wilson, Margaret. Where's Sully? He never showed for his inspection. Thank God, John. I was beginning to think nobody would ever come. Where is Sully? Sarah, take your doll and go outside and play. Now stay close to the house. What's happened, Margaret? Sully died this morning. He came home last night and he, he wasn't feeling good. He looked so pale. I put him to bed down here where he could get some quiet. And I never expected him to go like that, John, with, without a last word, a prayer ever been spoken. Where is he? I'll show you. John, what are we going to do? Wilson couldn't forget the image of helplessness he had seen on the faces of his colleague's family. Out of compassion, he left what he could from his own meager funds. And he knew the time had come for maintenance of way employees to band together. In July of 1887, in Demopolis, Alabama, that conviction became reality. The order of railroad trackmen was formed with John Wilson as founding president. The forerunner of today's brotherhood had been born. Canadian trackmen were also realizing the need for a union to deal with the callous attitudes of management. And in 1892, the United Brotherhood of Railway Trackmen was formed in Canada. The Canadian and U.S. unions joined forces seven years later. And as the world entered the 20th century, maintenance of way employees began to see the benefits of international trade unionism of membership in the Brotherhood. A 75-day strike against the Canadian Pacific Railway during the summer of 1901 settled any remaining doubts as to the Brotherhood's future. That strike produced the first contract between the Brotherhood and railway management. The union had shown what it could do for workers, and the success was contagious. Unorganized trackmen in the United States and Canada began joining the union in record numbers the Brotherhood was here to stay. Over the next five decades, the Union would make dramatic strides on behalf of its members. Through two wars to end all wars, through the greatest economic depression the world has known, through it all, the Brotherhood was there to serve its members. The Brotherhood has indeed been there for maintenance of way employees, dramatically improving wages and working conditions, securing passage of landmark legislation like the Railway Labor Act, the Federal Employers Liability Act, the Railroad Unemployment Insurance Act, and the Railroad Retirement Act, negotiating contracts and benefit packages that provided increased job security and a better way of life for members and their families. 
That better way of life didn't just happen. Every step of the way has been laced with struggle, but every roadblock has been countered with commitment, the commitment of a union and its members. During the 1960s, the times they are a-changin' was the title of a popular folk song. For railroad workers and society in general, those words were filled with meaning and accuracy. The 60s and 70s were characterized by rapid change, changing attitudes, changing government policies, changing technology. And the change only intensified with the onslaught of the 80s. High tech has become more than a buzzword. It's a major factor in our lives. The enormous changes brought on by deregulation, new technology, and the threats posed by vicious anti-union campaigns have presented railroad workers with a new set of challenges that rival those of the Brotherhood during its infancy. For maintenance of way employees, membership in the Brotherhood has never been more important. That BMW e-card still represents a means to achieve a better future. The union uh, is uh, our strength and uh, it is our backing and it really helps us as union employees and uh, uh, without it uh, we're just like it's just like going out in the cold without having a coat on you know you freeze to death the brotherhood's first century represents a tribute to the collective courage of workers who dared to dream and then fought for their rights and a better way of life It has been a century of progress, a century to look back on with enormous pride. Today, that proud past represents a springboard for the future. For as Carl Sandburg, the poet of the working man, once said, the world is an ocean of tomorrows. With a century of accomplishment to build on, the Brotherhood is poised for those tomorrows. Together we have come far, and together we will go farther still. <laughs>